Thank you, Madam Chair. I appreciate it. Uh, sorry for my my tardiness. Multiple committee hearings, as uh, as all of you know. Um, uh, thank you so much. And I wanted to uh, ask a little bit, uh, Acting Commissioner, about your conversation you had with the ranking member. Um, looking forward to a world after Title Forty Two. You mentioned coordination with ORR um, uh, with respect to unaccompanied children. Does CBP plan to coordinate with local NGOs and organizations that support asylum seekers as part of the post Title 42 strategy as well? Uh, yes, sir, uh, we do and we are coordinating. Uh, we actually have uh, NGO coordinators across the southwest border, both in the Office of Border Patrol and the Office of Field Operations, who are having uh, you know, almost daily conversations with the NGO. I myself have uh, met with a good portion of the, the NGOs across the Southwest border. How many of those coordinators do you do you have? And and with respect to their their conversations, are you talking? Um, uh, is is there a conversation about post Title Forty Two in that, or is it just we're all going to work together and keep the lines of communication open? I'm asking specifically about post Title Forty Two. So there's uh, there's a coordinator at each sector and at each field office, and um, you know we're talking specifically uh, about uh, the the coordination that's going on between the, the NGOs uh, and CBP, which is happening today. Uh, are we specific? Are we talking uh, specifically about uh, post uh, 42, the post 42 environment? Uh, I'd have to get back to you on that. I'd appreciate if you if you would. Um, also wanted to continue on the line of questioning that Representative Underwood uh, asked about vaccinations uh, and spend a little time focusing on how CBP's posture may change as they interact with more vaccinated individuals. Does CBP have a process to interact with individuals who state that they have received the vaccine when they present themselves uh, at the border? And does CBP have a plan to, to validate if an individual has received a vaccine? So uh, as of now, um, you know, we do have what's called our job hazard analysis. Uh, that's something that we send out to our ports and our border patrol stations that dictates how we uh, interact uh, with the traveling public, uh, the migrants, uh, and those folks we interact with on a daily basis. We continually update the job hazard analysis based on the conditions uh, that we face. Uh, as of now, you know, we're treating um, everybody we encounter as if they may have COVID, uh, but as you know, things change, we'll continue to update that guidance. What type of strategies are your medical professionals uh, talking about with respect to um, uh, vaccinated uh, individuals, uh, an individual who presents themselves um, and, and states that they have been vaccinated. What, what guidance have they been giving you uh, with respect to that? I understand that there's manuals and I understand that things policies get updated. Um, I'm asking specifically uh, about this issue. Well, specifically today, we're treating everybody as if they would still have COVID. We're still wearing our, our PPAE. Um, that, that's the most recent job ha hazard analysis uh, we, we put out there. Uh, CDC is uh, the folks that uh, dictate uh, you know, um, uh, the vaccinate folks uh, vaccination or testing regimen and, and how they enter the country. But, you know, that's how we're treating them today as if they would have COVID. As you think through what that planning might look like, what resources or supplies um, would you need in order to ensure the safety of CBP personnel, uh, migrants, asylum seekers and the American public uh, should the border reopen? So, sir, uh, we continue to ensure that we have the appropriate stockpile of, of PPAE we, uh, to ensure that we have the appropriate supplies for the migrants, for our officers and our agents. We continue to update the guidance uh, as the, the, the pandemic changes. Uh, you know, I think we've, we've come an awful long ways uh, during the pandemic and learning what and how we can do it, what supplies we need, ensuring that we have the appropriate stockpile. You know, I, I'd give the agency credit and we're one of the few agencies that had the appropriate stockpile going into the pandemic uh, to, to deal with what we're dealing with today. Uh, and, and I want to give the agency credit for for doing that. I, I just think that there's more that we can do when it comes to um, uh, providing that, uh, that that discussion and, and, and the 
policies and looking looking past the next curve, uh, I think we need to do uh, a little bit more of a deep dive and, and look forward to the continued conversations. Uh, yield back, Madam Chair. Thank you, sir. I believe that uh, that concludes